encourage you, man, because you got boys, you got young men. We want you to come to the school and learn about your heritage, man, about your history according to the Bible, because you're not going to find this out anywhere else. All right. Only thing you're going to find out right here is to uh, to to be a whoremonger, to to do drugs or all the other wicked things that keep us in our oppression. But learn the laws of God is what's going to take us out out of our oppression. All right. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. All right, so these feasts that they're talking about, we're going to go into the Sabbath. Today is the seventh day, the day of rest, which is called the Sabbath, all right? Verse 3, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. All right, so the Lord gave us six days to do work, which is from Sunday, the starting of the work week, all the way till Friday. Right. All right. On the seventh day, the Lord rested. So the same way he rested, we should rest, which right. means we shouldn't work. What else you got? It is, I mean, it is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. In all your dwellings, meaning everybody in your household, since you're the head of the house, they shouldn't be working neither. They shouldn't be buying or selling or cooking or cleaning because the Lord rested. Now, if you start doing that, if you're working and cooking and cleaning and buying, you're saying that you have more wisdom than the Most High God. Right. And no one has that. If he's resting on the seventh day, who are we to, have to keep on working? Yeah. All right? So God made that for us. All right? This is the book of Exodus, chapter 16 and verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. So this is on a Friday, right? He's saying tomorrow is the Sabbath, the rest that we're talking about. Bake that which ye will bake today, and see that ye will see. So bake or boil or cook anything that you need for tomorrow. And that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So if you're going to cook your food, you cook it on Friday. Because you're not supposed to cook on Saturday, so cook a double portion so when Saturday comes, you have something to eat. Because we're not supposed to cook on Saturday. All right, that's according to the law. You understand that though? Because yeah, that goes into work. Yeah. All right. Because we have to prepare things and cook it up, and that takes a lot. You actually exert energy. So we're supposed to do that on Friday. Get that all out the way. So when Saturday comes, you have your food set aside and you're ready to rest. All right. All right. Give me all. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter ten, verse thirty-one. And if the people of the land bring ware or victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. So we're not supposed to buy or sell on the Sabbath either. That's what you have six days to do with because we're not supposed to be exchanging money with anybody, all right? But there's a reason for that. Think about that. You watch uh, sports? Okay, I'm gonna tell you about our people in sports. The brother brought up uh, a little while ago that sports, uh, we're, we're the best at sports. All of our people are in basketball, football, we're the greatest at it, right? We fill the arenas, our players. I'm gonna tell you something on Saturdays, college football is a huge event. They fill the stadiums, they, they, they make a lot of money, they make millions of dollars off of college football, right? All right, so imagine what happens if our people would abide by these laws and not go to these football games. What would that do to the university? Millions of dollars if our people would not fill the stadium to either play in them or buy tickets to go see them. What happens to that school? Change the day. They, hey, look, they'll change the day, but they'll bankrupt, bankrupt them too. Yeah. If we come back to the laws of God, it shuts them down. We're the, we're the people that, that run this whole society yeah. with our money. Uh, that without us, they can't do nothing. Just like with the bus boycotts back in the day with Martin Luther King. Remember that? When everybody stopped riding the bus, what did it force the people to do? Start treating us right, not putting us in the back of the bus because we run the communities with our money. We're the ones that keep this thing going. So, football for us, it, we don't need to have it. That's a Greek custom that was meant. Give me that, Maxby. That's a Greek custom that's meant to um to distract us from keeping the God's laws. That was a plan from the beginning from the white men. They knew what they was doing. They knew how we were. We were subject to it. Start playing sports on Saturdays on the day of rest. And that's gonna keep us in our captivity. Because as long as we're as long as we're sinning, we can't get back on top. We will always be at the bottom. Remember what I said. There's no such thing as equality. It's either at the top or the bottom. Look at this, look at the situation right now. Look around. Where are we at right now? 
We're at the bottom, right? Yep. Our people, we, we the worst, man. Yeah. We the worst. Funny. Yeah. This is the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 4 and verse 10. Which when the king had granted and had gotten into his hand the rule, he fought with besought his own nation to the Greekish fashion. All right, so our leaders back there, we had a bunch of we had a bunch of sellouts too in our nation, right? The people of today, like you would think, like Jesse Jackson and the people that's supposed to be our leaders, right? They get money, they get paid to keep us in this low condition. They're not teaching you what you need to know. Same thing that happened back then. Verse 11, and the royal privileges granted of special favor to the Jews by the means of John, the father of Eupolimus, who went and who went ambassador to Rome for enmity and aid. He took away and putting down the governments which were according to the law, he brought up new customs against so the law. So he put down the governments that we used to keep the law. He took those down because he was getting he was getting uh, riches from the from the so-called white man to silence us. All right. So he will go back and teach our nation to sin. I'm going to show you how. Verse 12, for he built gladly a place of exercise. A place of exercise. Listen closely. Under the tower itself and brought the chief young men under his subjection. The chief young men, meaning us. All right? The chief young men under subjection. Go ahead. And made them wear a hat. Any hat today, think about it. What You see uh, when college players get uh, recruited and they, 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 they make their decision where they want to go, what do they usually do? I decided to go to uh, Florida State University, such and such, right? When you go to NFL draft, right? When they walk across stage, they NBA draft, whatever. Put the hat on, shake their hands. Spiritual. This is, this is way before this even happened. A long time ago. Verse 13. Now such was the height of Greek fashion and increase of heathenish manners. Heathenish manners. That was them. We didn't do that. We didn't partake in that because we knew our focus was the most high God's law. Keep going. Through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch and no high priest, that the priest had no courage to serve anymore at the altar, but despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices, hasten to be partakers of the unlawful allowance in the place of exercise after the game of discus called the fourth. Discus. That's that Olympic game when they take that thing and they, they throw it as far as they can. That's back in the day. This is all history. This is our history. We, hey, shalom. Shalom, shalom. We started doing that instead of keeping God's law. That's a distraction to us. Think about it. When you was in, you go to church sometimes, Sunday, well, look, I know when I was in church, I used to look at my college, man, we got to hurry up and get a body. I got to watch this game. That's a distraction. That's, I'm telling you, we always do that thing, man. That game about to come on, man. It's, it's Sunday now. Yeah. Giants about to kick off. But um, it's the same thing that's happening now. It happened back then. It's a distraction to keep God's laws. So as long as we're doing that, it's what we're going to be at the bottom. There's nothing to benefit from. Right. Bro, bro. Uh, bro, we got a school right, right across the bridge right here. I know you talked to the officer of the lion. Yeah. You talked to him already, yeah. yeah. So when you get time, man, come on, bring your boys. Learn about your heritage, your history. This is all we got right now, all right? We can't depend on nobody else. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons.
IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.